Will the upcoming 250 mile rear wheel drive Tesla Cybertruck be equipped with lithium iron phosphate batteries? Well, stick around as I share why it appears likely that it will and what this would mean. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. While lithium iron phosphate batteries are less energy dense and thus are not suitable for long range vehicles, these iron based batteries generally last longer, are safer, and can be regularly charged to 100%. While the nickel manganese cobalt 4680 cyber cells that are used in the tri motor and dual motor cyber trucks, while that chemistry is necessary to give that truck over 300 miles of range. With the rear wheel drive version of the Tesla Cybertruck that's supposed to be available sometime in 2025, that 250 mile range estimate that Tesla gives for the truck, to me, that seems really fitting for a lithium iron phosphate chemistry. And I believe that an LFP battery pack in the Cybertruck with a rear wheel drive powertrain could provide that amount of range. Let me explain why this makes a lot of sense and that the math does match up. Now, first of all, we need to address the issue of the structural battery pack. Of course, the Cybertruck has a structural battery pack that is designed around the 4680 Cyber cells. The full pack, which I assume all of the space is utilized in the battery pack, has a capacity of around 123 kilowatt hours. A 250 mile range truck would obviously have a smaller battery pack and thus, if Tesla used the same nickel manganese cobalt cyber cells that they use in the dual motor and tri motor versions of the truck, they would have to include less cells in the pack. Since the pack is structural in nature, this would mean that they would have to either fill the void with dummy cells or build in some kind of other structure into the battery pack. This to me doesn't seem like something that a Tesla would do and it would make much more sense in my opinion instead of having dummy cells to use a less energy dense chemistry like LFP. Tesla of course already utilizes lithium iron phosphate batteries in their standard range vehicles. The rear wheel drive Tesla Model 3 is equipped with lithium iron phosphate batteries and not in the USA, but in other markets, the rear wheel drive um, Tesla Model Y is also equipped with lithium iron phosphate batteries. So Tesla already has a track record of using these batteries in standard range vehicles. So a standard range Tesla Cybertruck with LFP batteries would make a lot of sense. And using LFP batteries in the Cybertruck would free up more 4680 Cyber cells, not only so they could produce more dual motor and tri motor Cybertrucks, but also to potentially use these batteries in the Tesla Semi and future vehicles as well. This of course brings up the question, what format of lithium iron phosphate batteries do I believe Tesla will use in the Cybertruck if I'm right? Well, it could manufacture 4680 batteries with an LFP cathode chemistry, and that is a possibility, and I'll talk about that shortly. But Tesla could also use BYD blade batteries, which are a form of prismatic batteries, and incorporate them into a structural battery pack design. It appears like the made in Berlin rear wheel drive Tesla Model Y already utilizes these BYD batteries in a structural pack design. So Tesla is showing that this is definitely something that they're willing to do. So why not do it with a Cybertruck? Of course, Tesla could surprise me and they could end up building their own LFP 4680 batteries. There's really no indication specifically of that, but that could be a possibility. And the LFP Tesla news that has come out somewhat recently about them partnering with CATL to build LFP batteries here in the United States, that partnership is supposedly those batteries are going to be used in their mega pack energy storage business. And very likely those will just be the standard prismatic battery cells that they use right now in the mega pack XL. So that LFP mega pack. So Tesla building 4680 cyber cells with an LFP chemistry, at least initially, doesn't seem like it will happen. Okay, so now that I've covered why I believe it makes a lot of sense, I now want to dive into some of the numbers and show that I believe an LFP battery pack would be enough to power the Cybertruck 250 miles, no problem. So let's dive into some comparisons using the rear wheel drive Model 3 as an example. 
Okay, with the rear wheel drive Tesla Model 3 in mind, I wanna talk about the battery size difference between the long range pack and the rear wheel drive LFP pack and the efficiency difference between these two vehicles with a dual motor versus a rear wheel drive single motor. The rear wheel drive Tesla Model 3 that's sold in the United States has an LFP battery pack with a capacity of around 60.2 kilowatt hours. Whereas a long range all wheel drive version of the vehicle has a battery pack capacity of around 81.4 kilowatt hours. So the LFP rear wheel drive battery pack has around 26% less capacity than the long range all wheel drive battery pack. Doing a little bit of math when it comes to an efficiency comparison, the long range all wheel drive Model 3 is somewhere around 8% less efficient than the rear wheel drive Model 3. There's one more Model 3 comparison that I wanna do before I move over to the Cybertruck, and it comes down to pack level energy density. The rear wheel drive Tesla Model 3 that's sold here in the United States, that vehicle is equipped with CATL LFP batteries. And according to EPA documents, the pack level energy density of that vehicle is 126 watt hours per kilogram. In comparison, the long range all wheel drive Model 3 that's equipped with 2170 batteries sold in the United States, that pack level energy density is 174 watt hours per kilogram. This means that the LFP battery pack in the rear wheel drive Model 3 is around 27.6% less energy dense than the 2170 equipped long range battery pack. Now I do wanna mention right here that all of the numbers that I just discussed compared a 2170 battery pack to a CATL battery pack. And I mentioned earlier that I believe the Cybertruck, if equipped with LFP batteries, it would be a BYD blade battery pack. The BYD equipped Tesla Model Y that's built at Gigafactory Berlin, that vehicle still has around a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is pretty much the same size as the CATL equipped battery pack. So I don't expect that pack level energy density numbers are going to be drastically different between the CATL pack and the BYD pack. At least it doesn't appear like that on a surface level. With that being said, using those numbers to kind of back into some estimates for the Cybertruck, a 250 mile range Cybertruck, according to my estimates, would only need around an 83 to 89 kilowatt hour battery pack. And that would equate to an efficiency for the all season tire equipped version of the truck of between 332 to 356 watt hours per mile, or for the all terrain tire equipped version to get 234 miles of range, which is my estimate based on the efficiency difference between the all season and all terrain tires for the other versions of the truck. My estimate for the all-terrain rear-wheel drive version of the Cybertruck when it comes to efficiency would be 355 to 380 watt-hours per mile. So based on the numbers that I previously talked about, this kind of efficiency does seem to make sense with a single motor Cybertruck and an LFP-based chemistry could easily give the Cybertruck a battery pack that is somewhere between 83 to 89 kilowatt-hours of capacity. Okay, so I've talked about why it makes sense. I've shown that the numbers do seem to make sense as well. What would this mean and why would an LFP-based battery pack Cybertruck be a big deal? Well, first of all, at a surface level, 250 miles of range with a truck doesn't seem like enough. But you do have to remember that with LFP battery packs, Tesla recommends that you regularly charge to a 100% state of charge, which means that you can actually use a larger percentage of the available range in that truck for daily use. Whereas with the nickel-based battery packs, you really don't want to regularly charge over 80%. Thus, if you look at the most efficient version of the Cybertruck, which this wheel choice is not available yet, but it will be in the future, but if you went with the all-wheel drive Tesla Cybertruck with all-season tires, and you were able to use 80% of that range for daily use, that would be 80% of 340 miles would be 272 miles of range. Whereas 100% of the 250 miles that are estimated for the rear wheel drive version of the truck, and I believe that's with all season tires, that 100% would give you 250 miles of daily range. So that difference is really not very drastic there. In addition, LFP batteries in general appear to have a lower degradation and longer life than nickel-based batteries. For example, this is a chart that I used in the past, but for the Tesla Model Y that's equipped with LFP batteries, according to information that Tessie sent me when I asked for it, it appears like on average that vehicle experiences around a 2% range loss after around 45,000 miles, according to their data. 
For comparison, when it comes to the Tesla Model Y that's equipped with 4680 batteries, once again, using data that was provided to me by Tessie. Looking at this chart, it appears like after 45,000 miles on average, that vehicle will lose around 6.1% of its battery capacity. So a 6.1% capacity loss with 4680 batteries after 45,000 miles as compared to a 2% loss after 45,000 miles with an LFP based battery pack in the Model Y. There's definitely a pretty good difference there between those two battery types. In addition, when it comes to charging performance, the LFP batteries in Tesla's vehicles have proven to charge pretty quickly and specifically the BYD equipped LFP Model Y pack has a great charging curve. And according to information that I found, it is able to steadily charge at over 170 kilowatts all the way until a 50% state of charge. So if you're just doing quick charges at a somewhat lower state of charge, it's going to give you really a pretty fast charge in the middle there of the charging session. In addition, and this is something that I talked about in depth in a previous video, but if you compare the cold weather performance of Tesla's LFP battery packs versus their nickel based packs, the LFP battery packs actually do quite well. When it comes to range loss in the winter, the LFP battery packs, at least on the data that I used in that video, and that data came from Bjorn Neeland on YouTube, it appears like the LFP battery packs in the Tesla Model 3 actually lose less range in the winter versus the long range packs. In addition, when it comes to cold weather charging performance with the LFP battery packs, as long as you uh, navigate to a supercharger in the car software, this will cause the vehicle to precondition or warm up the battery pack so that when you get to the charger, the LFP batteries will be warm and ready to charge and really should charge decently quickly. So with all that being said, I think it appears very likely that the rear wheel drive Tesla Cybertruck will be equipped with an LFP battery pack. This is something that I would be excited about, but I want to know um, your opinion in the comment section below. Would you be excited about an LFP 250 mile range Tesla Cybertruck? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.